Hello everyone, WolfieCast here, back with another hero deep dive, For I take a hero from Gigantic and go through every single one of their upgrades and every single ability and tell you exactly what they do and how they work. And sometimes there are upgrades in these trees that don't show certain things, and I'm here just to kind of clarify and explain what they actually do and how they function. So we are back here with Ezrin. Now Ezrin as a mage, remember that he, kind of the mage... The, the mage playstyle, the caster playstyle in this game revolves around these high impact abilities that offer a lot of utility either for the team or for yourself. Um, but Ezrin's playstyle, just the way that he's designed, he's got a lot of self-sustain with a bunch of lifesteal kind of toggling the soul collecting and then using his right mouse button to launch souls. And his soul launching is his main damage output, while the rest is all about kind of keeping himself alive or keeping enemies away from him. So as you might expect, a lot of his upgrades reflecting on those individual abilities are to further enhance that capability. Uh, Ezrin is often seen as like the drain tank in this game. So there's just all scattered all throughout, especially his left mouse button and his Q, like so many upgrades that increase lifesteal. <laughs> Now, I remind everyone again, as always, when you jump into the game of Clash Mode, you're going to start at level 1, and you're going to gain experience a level from 1 to 10. And every level that you gain, you're going to gain an upgrade point to put somewhere in your talent trees, or somewhere in your in your ability upgrade trees. And you want to use your, you want to prioritize those upgrades that you actually need as far as maybe responding to the enemy team, or just to generally enhance what you're trying to do. Now, Ezrin Ezrin at his core is supposed to be a damage dealer, so you kind of want to balance doing as much damage as possible uh, in those early mixes and then picking up certain utility things later on. But let's jump into the upgrades of his left mouse button first. Starting on the left side, we have Unholy Communion. On hit, deals, bonus, uh, deals extra damage and steals souls of nearby enemies too. I'm sorry, it just deals damage. It doesn't deal more damage. But basically, it becomes a cleave attack. So long as enemies are within 2.5 meters of each other, you will uh, deal damage and steal a soul from each of them. And this is a maximum of... I mean, it doesn't say that it has a maximum, but you can still only hold three souls. So ideally, you want to try to hit maybe three people or at least two. But basically, your LMB just becomes a cleave. And that's hard to show on Nasus because he's standing by himself. And I'm going to go way over here to where there are target dummies. I'll take back the talent point really fast and just do my normal attacks. You see, I'm just gaining one soul as normal. But then I'm going to pick Unholy Communion. And now it's a cleave. And I'm getting one I'm getting one soul per cleave, which means that I'm also getting three triggers of healing because it, it counts as like it counts as individual healing. So with this, you're actually getting 150 health per just LMB. So long as there's three people. You might actually get more because it's not a cap of three. If the if the whole enemy team is just all clustered together, which is not going to happen that often, to be to be fair, but in a situation where they were, like you're gaining, you're getting five souls at once, even though you can only hold three, and healing for just a, a ton, <laughs> like right away, just instant two hundred fifty healing. It's it's kind of crazy, but uh, level twos now or rank twos, sorry. Tier 2 on the left side is Communal Suffering. On simultaneous hits, meaning that you have to you have to get all three hits at once, uh, it'll deal 75 extra damage, and you also gain extra focus. So basically, if you hit at least three people, you're going to deal double damage on your LMB. And I'll, 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 I should have probably just stayed over there because this is way easier to show. And unfortunately, these, these, uh, these target dummies don't seem to regain health. But basically, if you hit... Basically, if you hit all three, if you hit three people all at once, you'll just do extra damage. And this is, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to show unless all these get over here. But essentially, you're just doing double damage. Actually, it does technically show because you only do one damage no matter what. So if I take it back, it's only doing one damage. But if I take this upgrade talent, I'm doing two. So two, two per tick. So it's double damage. I wish it was a better way to show you that it, that it does that. But at the very least, you can see that it sort of functions with the target dummy. It turns from a 75 damage to a base 150 damage, so long as you hit three people. That's the quick gist of it. Uh, but a more powerful upgrade, in my opinion, 
On three hits with on hit with three souls, reduce all skill cooldowns by one second. It does not matter if you're hitting multiple people. So long as you hold three souls and you keep using your LMB, you're going to gain. You're going to reduce the cooldowns of your other abilities. And it's really only Q and E because your right mouse button doesn't have a cooldown. Technically, it's dependent on your uh, it's dependent on the ammunition from gaining souls. But watch, I'm going to I'm going to just use my Q and E in rapid succession. Put them on cooldown and then i'm going to start gaining souls and you'll watch look at those numbers tick down very rapidly because i'm just i keep hitting i already have q back e back this is a very strong upgrade in my opinion um <laughs> especially if you're juggling like using your abilities pretty constantly which you really should because uh well of souls it's 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 a pretty strong kind of hard to hit ability but but rooting someone it's pretty uh it's pretty powerful but if you use this just kind of Keep in mind that you're sort of limited to not using your uh, right mouse button, which is all fine, but that's really the main source of your damage. But if if you find yourself really rapidly needing to get your uh, needing to get your other cooldowns back, this is a pretty good upgrade to do so. Now to the right side tier one of our uh, LMB. It's called Soul Survivor. Each soul buffs the self healing amount. So normally the self healing is only 50, 50 per soul. But if you have one soul, it's 50 HP. If you have two souls, it's 60 HP. And if you have all three souls, each soul stolen from there on is 70 HP. So this will be easier to show if I take some damage. I'm going to go over to the Motiga here to start taking some burns. And I'll go about maybe I'll, I'll I'll take like a third of my health away to start showing you how this works. So that'll be good. It's probably actually easier to show if I do it like at slow intervals. But you can see when I have all three there, 70 healing per. I'm going to release one. All right, I suppose it's actually when you gain that second or third. Yeah, so it's when you gain a second soul or third soul, it increases the healing. So yeah, now I've gained a second one. It was 60, and then I gain a third, 70. So just very, very... um. Again, very, very used on, very contingent on the fact that you're not going to be using the right mouse button uh, too often. If you need to increase that self healing, it's it's pretty rapid bursts of healing, uh, and seventy health is actually a lot when the attack is so quick. But remember that the healing is only the healing only works when the soul actually reaches you. Reaches you. So on some of these longer range casts. The, the the soul is gonna the healing is gonna be delayed because the soul takes some time to get to you. Now on the tier two on the left side, uh, with maximum souls, soul fire's damage is increased by ten percent. It's not a big not a big increase, but it's a it's a you know this this is one of those upgrades I would probably get around the end of your total path, or if you take this at all. It's just kind of a it's a very negligible change, but it is an increase nonetheless. You can see you get that small damage boost, and it only increases your LMB. It's just kind of a small bonus to your LMB damage. It's not super great, but it is something if you feel like taking it. I think a better upgrade here is increases the maximum soul healing. Wager of souls with maximum souls buffs the healing even more. Changes it from a 70 healing to 100 healing. Now go over here again. And like I, like I said with the tier 1... Uh, like, or rather, like I discovered with the tier one, it's when you reach the third soul. It's not after you have three souls. So your third soul gained and onward will heal 100 health so long as you keep three souls. So 50, 60, and then now 100. Very, very good self-sustain if you want to not use your souls. Now we'll go to the tier one on the RMB. On the left side here, we have Growing Dread. Each soul deals buffed damage. So basically, you have a five second window. If you use a soul fire, then the next soul fire that's launched deals 20% extra damage, and this will stack up to three times. Now, there, there's a small, it is a noticeable animation, like the particle effect of each consecutive soul fire grow slightly larger the projectile itself very very minuscule increase in size it but it does technically make it slightly easier to hit because each consecutive one is slightly bigger so this is really good when you get uh this is really good when you get used to the tech of using your third or, or using a fourth lmb to have a fourth technically a quote-unquote fourth soul flying towards you 
and then firing your right mouse button to launch four attacks at once. But you'll see if I if I launch or sorry, if I take four souls and then I launch, you can see each fireball is slightly bigger and it's doing more damage with each consecutive hit. So that total is 1136. And I'll let Gnosis get some health back so they can show. Well, I'll just no, because that one has more armor that won't show it properly. So I'll let, I'll let Gnosis get some health back to kind of show the comparison of, of the damage. So it was 1136 with the upgrade. And now I will steal four souls again and then launch 932. So that's actually a pretty significant damage bonus, especially if you can hit consecutive uh, hits. And it doesn't have to be on the same person, just so long as you've just like it's literally using the ability. It's not like you have to hit and then the damage gets increased. It's just using soul fire. And it's not it's not each. Ca I mean, technically, it is each cast because each soul, each soul that you fire is technically another cast of the ability. So this this is very rapidly increases the overall damage by using those four shot uh, blast. And that's kind of what you want to do all the time. It's really simple to pull off and it's really effective. So that's what the tier one does. Next off into tier two, the basically the soul damage buff for consecutive shots increases to 30% instead of just 20%. So I believe it was 1132 with the tier one. And now I'm going to do the total damage with tier two. 1238. So a, a slight increase, but an increase nonetheless. So that's that's how that one works. And then on the right side, we have Ghostly Flame. Now the souls pierce. So normally, normally, normally Soul Fire does not pierce through enemies, but with this upgrade, it gains piercing property. That's all it does. So I'm going to go over here so I can shoot through. And you can see the damage number back there if I can actually hit properly. But you see, it just kind of pierces through Gnosis and damages a creature that is behind him or, or any and all creatures that are behind. And I'll, I'll go over here, actually show this with the uh, with the targeting dummies, because that'll be a lot easier to see. So your, your soul fire just gets a little bit larger, does more more does more damage with the consecutive hits and then pierces through all enemies. This is a very good cleave. Now, granted, the projecto is fairly narrow, despite the size the, the the way that it looks it's pretty large but it's actually fairly narrow but if they're if they're roughly closer together or kind of coming through a hallway you're guaranteed to hit at least two people and doing doing aoe damage is better than doing single target damage in almost every circumstance so you're in the in this tier two you're basically choosing between slightly increased damage to one person or damage to multiple people and generally i would take multiple people every time now on the right side tree of the RMB, we have Salt the Earth. On impact, now deals area damage in a 1.5 meter radius. So I it's slightly smaller than the area effect of Unholy Communion. Uh, Unholy Communion was two and a half meters. Salt the Earth is only one meter. But basically on impact, it's just a small explosion and anyone that's within range of the explosion will take that damage as well. And this, this is again, sort of hard to show, but there is an animation effect that changes. So you kind of see when I hit Gnosis there, it just does a small AOE. And I believe this works even if you just hit the ground. So yeah, if, if even just on impact on the ground, it doesn't have to hit someone directly. It'll do a bit of area damage to everyone that's nearby. And also the damage, the damage, the damage does not fall off either. It's everyone that is in that space will take the same amount of damage. There are other... There are other uh, heroes in the game that have kind of these cleave explosion upgrades on certain abilities, but on the outside of the explosion or kind of halfway through the damage scales, depending on how far away they are from center. That is not the case for this upgrade. It's actually it's actually pretty strong because it makes just huge explosion damage and everyone will take the same amount of damage. It's also a tier one. So it's it's less uh, commitment to that upgrade instead of the other side where it required you to do two points to basically do cleave damage so that's something to consider as well uh depending on how you kind of want to use that upgrade or rather use use the upgrades on this ability as a whole uh, but anyway tier two is on the left side we now have death's reach basically increases the size of your soul fire explosions to 2.5 meters so adding a meter to the radius of the explosion and just making larger area of effect and again 
just kind of shows more more on the actual particle effects. The animation is the best way to show how this upgrade functions. Basically, on impact with a character or on a on a ground or wall, it'll just explode. And again, uh, the the damage does not fall off based on how far away they are from center. It'll always do max damage to everyone that's in there. So it's really good. And then on the right side, we have Soul Decay. Enemies that are hit are slowed for one second. Slowed is a 20% movement speed reduction. So again, just fire a soul. The radius is not increased because uh, remember the tier one. The tier one is the one that does the small size. You're you're giving up the tier uh, the larger increase size just to do a slow effect. And it's 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 a pretty decent uh, upgrade. It's very easy to apply multiple times because of the fact that you just. You want to launch as many soul fires as possible every time that you cast it. So this is a this is pretty good at kind of doing a bit of lockdown. I do think that uh, the other one is a little bit better because you, if you're gonna commit to taking an AOE upgrade on your right mouse button, you want to really just do as much AOE as possible. The slowing is nice, uh, but there are probably better slows in the game like throughout the roster. And this is a very big commitment for just a 20% movement speed reduction. On the Q upgrades, we go to the left side first. We have Spectral Haste. Incre uh, basically gives you a movement speed buff while you are using the ability. A 25% movement speed uh, buff. So this is actually really, really strong. This is a very, very good upgrade and very low commitment. Um, so just... It's very, it's very simple. While you while you have the upgrade, you just have that movement speed. You get the speed boost floating text. You see the particle effects of like kind of the wind waves rolling behind you. And remember that you can sprint during your queue. There there are there are a few characters in the game that can actually use uh, their sprint mechanic while they are using another ability, and that'll increase the sprint damage or sprint damage sprint speed too, <laughs> because it's all kind of your movement speed is all tied together. It's not just your normal in combat or or uh, normal movement speed. It'll increase your sprint movement speed too. So very very low commitment, very strong upgrade. 25 percent movement speed is actually really big. It's actually probably one of the fastest uh, movement speed increases uh, in the whole game. Tier two on the left side here we have Will of the Wisp. On activation, purify stuns, gain immunity to crowd controls. So you you have full immunity to crowd control. Uh, while you're using the ability and if you're stunned you can still use the ability now this says it this says that it purifies stun it actually purifies all hit reactions now all hit reactions are launch stun days and i believe one more uh and interrupt and interrupts are usually pretty short so that you're not really that worried about it but this will this will prevent all hit reactions so if i don't have the ability normally I'm just kind of stuck flying in place until I land because that's how launch works. You're, you're basically stunned until you land, but I get launched. I can use the ability right away and I break stun. I break launch and I can just keep going and I have full control of myself again. So this is a really good. Um, this is a really good like if you get jumped on and, and focused really good to uh, kind of get yourself broken out of that space. And this is a. Uh, very simple to use upgrade and you can use it pretty often because spectral form only has a 15 second cooldown so you kind of want to use that as often as you can especially maybe if it's like incoming chain cc like a paco and then you know margrave leaping and maybe wanting to use his focus you'll be completely immune to any follow-up cc that he's trying to do and on the right side tier two as well we have spectral insight with maximum souls restores 50 stamina so this only works uh, if you have full souls, it, don't, it won't actually do anything if you don't have uh, three souls. So uh, keep that in mind. But very, uh, very, very large stamina regain. But I'll, I'll just kind of get rid of some stamina and then take some souls. And then I'll use Q. Instant 50 stamina restore. Kind of, you know, an, another one of those moments where you can get yourself out of a fight in a pinch. I really do think that the other side's a little bit better because... Gaining full immunity to crowd control, especially for how long that spectral form lasts. Four seconds of immunity to all hit reactions is like really good. Almost busted. On the right side tier one of spectral form, we have grave danger. On hit restores 25 health. So the, uh, remember that spectral form deals damage very rapidly. 
Uh, it's every 0.4 seconds will deal a ticking damage. And this is, uh, this, I believe this only triggers once. I'm actually going to figure that out right now. I think it only technically triggers once. Uh, so regardless of how many people are near you, uh, it'll only give you, it'll only give you 25 health per tick, even if you're hitting like three people. But I'm actually going to check that right now. So if I'm going to, I'm going to go over here. Actually, I'm going to go over here. This is easier to do. Thanks. Think the, uh, think this cluster of Motigas here, because this is really helpful. But I'm just going to take a, a bunch of damage and I'm going to see if it's actually multiple instances of regen or if it's just one. So it looks like it's only it looks like it's only one uh, it's only one instance of healing, regardless of how many people you hit. So this is a, this is not 25 per. I'm really glad that it's not because then this would have been a stupid upgrade. Uh, super low commitment and even 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 at just 25 healing per tick, that is seven. That's basically 75 healing per second. Um so long as you're hitting somebody, which is really easy to do. And it's it's a lot of self-sustain and very simple to use. Uh, because you're already you're already giving yourself reduction and the ability to just ghost through people. This is a really good upgrade. Anyway, on tier two, uh the healing increases to 40. Very simple to understand. Base it starts at 25, tier two increases it to 40. And then beyond the grave, uh, if you kill someone while using this uh, uh while using this ability. Like, if you kill someone with the ability, I should say, it's an instant burst of healing that is 400 healing. And I'm I'm, I'm not really going to show that because it's it's kind of hard to pull off. Um, it's Well, I guess I could. Because if I just go over here and then start hurting this thing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt me no matter what. I'll just get it kind of low. And then I will, I will let it hurt me and show that uh, this upgrade does work. So yeah, that seems hard enough. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm just going to let it hurt me super fast. Get down. Maybe about a third of my health gone. And yeah, just a, a big burst of healing. Now remember, with every with every kill that you get as well, remember that the enemies will drop health orbs. So this is actually around a burst of 700 healing if you kill someone with it. And it's, it's pretty hard to actually get a kill with it because you can just kind of get interrupted um and it does it doesn't actually do that much damage but it does damage very rapidly so it's this is a very it's a very interesting upgrade because it sounds really really powerful like if you put all the math together but for the most part it's pretty rare to actually get a kill uh with with spectral form so use that at your own risk i do think that the other i do think that the other side is a little more um it's a little more reliable just because, you know, getting extra healing is, is pretty strong. And that's 120 healing basically per second. I, I do think that I do think that both sides are really strong, uh, but I would probably pick a touch of evil a little bit over the other. On to the E upgrades. Starting at the left side tier one, we have Unholy Ground. Increases the immobilized duration to one second. So normally it's 0.5 seconds, half a second. With this upgrade, it is one second. It's very, very simple to show. Just lasts longer. It's not that much. It's not that much of an increase, but half a second can really be a lot in f these kind of fast paced games. So not something to uh, not something to sleep on. But it, it, it seems like it's not really that much of an increase. But if you kind of, you know, if you're familiar with these sorts of games where it's just very rapid action and sort of medium, uh, medium TTK, then this upgrade can actually be uh, pretty, pretty pivotal, uh, especially if you land it on a, on a good cluster. At tier two on the left side, we have unholy chains. Increases the mobile duration in, uh, even more, but it also increases the cooldown of Well of Souls by five seconds. Twenty five. Uh, you normally a twenty second cooldown increases this to a twenty five second cooldown. Now, I will straight up tell you, this upgrade is not worth it. In in my full honest opinion, in a a 25, a five second increase to the cooldown of an already 20 second cooldown is not worth just an extra half second of immobilize. And, you know, immobilize is very strong. A second and a half is a, a second and a half is a pretty long duration, all things considered. But I don't think the trade off is worth it. 
I do think on the other side, though, we have Cursed Well. On hit removes buffs from enemies, and it will curse them. And curse prevents buff application for two seconds. So this is a two-second curse on all enemies that you hit. And you basically remove all their armor, all damage bonuses, uh, movement speed. You'll get rid of stealth. You'll get rid of shields, except for Rutger's shield, because it's because uh, Rutger's shield is very special. It, th this is... This is uh, very strong, and it's a, you know, it it's kind of depend on if the enemy team actually has like a good spread of, of upgrades, which they 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 typically will, uh, <laughs> because you know damage boosts and armor boosts are pretty prevalent in the game, especially if you have a support on the enemy team. So generally, just making enemies take more damage because you're removing that bonus armor can be pretty helpful, and this will get rid of um. This will get rid of damage reduction as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and it might prevent might it might prevent super jump as well. Because super jump is technically a buff. Like if they're standing on a super jump pad, they won't be able to use it. And they won't be able to use uh they won't be able to use super jump anyway because they're technically getting rooted for a second. But for that extra second that they're cursed, they won't they won't be able to use it for even longer. Now, this is a pretty um curse is Curse is widely slept on. Like, it's a widely slept on uh, debuff, in my honest opinion. So I think this is uh, pretty strong and can really catch people set by surprise uh, if they're not careful. On the right side, we have Soul Burst. On hit, uh, steal souls per stolen soul, and then you will heal yourself. So basically, it gives you a free LMB that just doesn't do damage. So you, you um, per enemy that you hit will also just launch like snag a soul from them and will heal you per soul that is given to you so uh yeah quite literally just uses your lmb on your e without doing damage to the enemy so i'm just going to show that real here or real quick right here and then just gives you a soul as normal and the soul will count towards like the stored soul that you have so if you hit two enemies like you'll have two stolen souls and have two to use for soul fires uh it's pretty good uh, but only if the enemies like kind of cluster together. So keep, kind of keep that in mind. Um, th I mean, it, it's it's pretty good even if you have even even if you only hit one enemy, this is still a pretty good upgrade because it gives you a little bit of healing, uh, gives you extra ammunition. It's it's a pretty simple to use and, and very low investment because it's a tier one. Tier two on the left side here, we have frailty. Well, uh, it your well of souls now applies a weakness weakness is a 25 percent damage reduction for three seconds so if you hit you see the floating test uh, text of weakness and immobilize his hands turn purple so he's weakened and then you also get the soul because it's tier two from the upgrade that gives you a soul on the other side uh on a two second interval every two seconds will steal an additional soul per enemy hit for four seconds so you steal one initially, and then you'll basically steal two more over the course of four seconds. And those souls will heal you and give you souls to count for soul fire. All like the whole thing. It just won't do extra damage because it's technically not your left mouse button. Watch, I will root Gnosis here. And then it steals a soul. And then two seconds pass, steal another soul. And then steal a third soul. And it's important to keep in mind that it will only steal souls from people that are alive. So if the enemies do die within that four second time window, you may actually only get a, end up getting one or maybe two, uh, two or sometimes maybe even one soul from them. Like if they die almost immediately, like before that second soul even gets pulled from them, you won't even get it at all. You can't you can't pull souls from dead bodies, unfortunately. That is that is not how that works. And finally, the focus upgrades. Tier one on the left side, Killer Instinct buffs Soul Calibers damage on enemies that are below fifty percent health. A Soul Calibur does not do that much damage on its own. It's 75 pre-mitigation, so a 10% damage increase is not super great, but at the same time, the threshold is pretty forgivable because 50% is actually a pretty generous... Uh, it's a pretty generous threshold for basically a small, like, execute mechanic. But you're just doing, you're just doing slightly more damage... If your enemy is at low health and that's, you know, you can, you can sort of read the numbers, uh, if you would like, but it's, it's a overall, a very small damage increase. So it's, I don't think this is worth sort of getting 
early if you decide to get it at all. I do think the other side of this tree is, is a bit stronger, but we're going to get to that. On the tier 2 on the left side here, we have Will to Power. Gain 10% damage reduction and 10%... Uh, sorry, 10% damage and 10 front damage reduction until death. Uh, uh, Will to Power is an upgrade that I believe Beckett might have had. Uh, again, there, there, I, I said... I said this maybe in the Ashland video as well as the Beckett video. There are a lot of upgrades on on uh, focuses for these uh, for the characters in the game. A lot of them do share uh, some of these upgrades, and they're 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 pretty strong. But basically, you have to use Soul Blast first, and you have a ten percent damage buff and a ten percent dan uh, damage reduction that is permanent until you die. And that's that's basically just all that this is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna real quickly build my focus and then use it, and then you will see the floating text that says that I have that damage reduction and extra bonus, uh, extra bonus damage. And since this is a, uh, since this doesn't specify that it's damage on your basic attack or damage on your LMB, this is actually a global damage boost, which I do think is uh, I do think is something worth considering. But you see, kind of that front armor boost, damage reduction, or sorry, front boost, and then damage bonus. And you can see his hands are now glowing, because his hands are his weapon, technically. And that, you know, that effect is basically permanent now, uh, until I were to die. And since Ezrin builds focus, like, Ezrin builds focus relatively quickly. Like, I think a lot of people... I think a lot of people sleep on the fact that he can build his focus really quick. So even if you do die, there's a very good chance that you're going to get this. Uh, you're you're going to get this these benefits again. And it, it's just a, a very simple ability that you can constantly proc. And it doesn't stack. Like it, it's it's like say if you don't actually die and you use your focus again, it doesn't boost it to twenty percent and then twenty percent damage reduction. Um, so, so don't like, you know, don't think you can just constantly use this and then after five casts, you just have 50 damage reduction. It's, it's only, it's only 10%. It does not stack again. But on the right side, we have remorseless on kill gain 10% movement speed and 10% damage for six seconds. So, uh, this is something I believe that Charnock had. He has this upgrade. Uh, and if you, yeah, quite literally just kill somebody, you gain a boost of movement speed and extra damage. And again, since it does not specify that it is only your left mouse button or basic attack damage. This is a global damage damage boost. So it increased the damage of Q, increased damage of E, increased damage of your focus, everything. But uh, I'll quickly kind of kill Charnock here. No, Charnock. I'll quickly kill Nasus here. I had Charnock on the mine. I said his name earlier. You can see when I get it, floating text of the speed boost. And since I, since I technically didn't die, I still had the will to power bonus, which I do think is a bug. Um, and, and I hope that a lot of people don't end up, um, abusing that if they end up taking the, like, if they pick the talent and then they get the kill and then they take back the talent and then they go on the other side of the tree, they would technically still gain the benefit, uh, if they don't die. It seems like an oversight bug if you ask me, and hopefully that gets patched in, in the future. Uh, but <laughs> definitely worth mentioning. So please, please don't abuse that. On the right side, tier one of his focus, I call this the defense tree, <laughs> personally. Uh, but bloody minded, you gain immunity to weakness and you recover faster from days. So you have you have full immunity to the weakness debuff. That is all that means. Very specifically, the weakness debuff. That is all that you gain. And then days, any days duration is reduced by half, effectively. Uh, and days is not super common, but this can come in clutch, especially if dazes last longer than a second. Like there are dazes that last a second and a half. There, I believe, Oru has a daze that lasts two seconds with a fully talented. So this can actually make a huge difference. Uh, but I think the stronger part of this uh, talent is the immunity to weakness, because weakness is actually quite common in the game. Like you, you don't really think about it that much because. Um, more often than not, you feel like you're doing less damage because enemies may just give themselves more armor. Like their their support might give them armor or they just have armor. Uh, but if you're applied weakness and they have more armor, you're basically doing nothing to some people. Uh, but full immunity to weakness is very, very strong. And this is all versions of weakness because remember that weakness has three tiers. It's like weakness, major weakness, and like supreme weakness or whatever the third tier is. It's just full immunity to all of them. 
And I, I can actually show that because there's a Motiga over here that uh, gives, like it gives weakness or it applies weakness on his attacks. So you see, normally I would have the, normally I would have the purple glow, like my hands would glow and I have that weakness. Extreme weakness is what it is, not, <laughs> not supreme weakness. Um, but you see, I don't have the purple glow. I don't have the weakness floating text. That's what Bloody Minded does. Tier two, we have, oops, tier two, we have Spectral Haste. Nope. Tier two, we have Lifeline. <laughs> Spectral Haste is on his queue. Tier two, we have Lifeline uh, on the left side, which is buff self-healing by 20% and then gain extra 20% health regen outside of combat. So your, all of your self-healing that you do is increased by 20%, even, even just the uh, self-healing from the LMB. And then your health would regain 20% faster so long as so long as you're out of combat basically just the bar like once you're out of remember out of, once you're out of combat your health will regen rapidly uh it's just 20 percent faster so this is actually a really really strong upgrade um it is it is very high commit though because it is a tier two but if you're kind of going the if you're kind of going the drain tank uh build that i will show later uh this is a really this is a really strong uh upgrade that you can probably get by around level five or six and you're basically unkillable uh on the other side though is hardy you gain 25 damage resistance immediately and that's that's at the bottom on kind of down here gain 25 percent de uh, degen resistance and uh immediately and then after you use your soul blast you'll gain an additional 25 percent degen resistance until you die and i will i will kind of build my focus super fast to show that and I, I can show that by going over to the degen motigas over by the uh, far left of the of the map here. That was weird. I definitely held down my right mouse button. It only fired one. Anyway, quickly build my focus, and then I'm gonna go over to one of the degen, probably the bleed one, because the bleed is the easiest to show. Since bleed, since bleed ignores armor anyway, it's very, uh, definitely the easiest to show uh reduction because remember it is specifically degen resistance most most degens are calculated by your armor with the exception of bleed because bleed ignores armor so degen resistance will not even factor i mean for for the debuffs that like consider armor it'll reduce it even further so this is actually a very very strong upgrade on its own even if you don't get the secondary part uh because with armor with armor, anything that's not a bleed is reduced already, and then it'll get reduced even further because you have you have a special degen resistance. But I'm gonna get the tier one, or kind of not even not even get the upgrade at all, and that is 50 bleeding per second. And then I'm gonna pick up the tier two to get 25%, and then take the bleed again. And you'll see the floating text now says 37. And it's 25% reduction. And then I'm going to use my focus. And then I'm going to take that bleed again. Come on, Motiga. There we go. And then now the floating text says 25. So this is this is really, really good if the enemy team has a ton of degen effects. Like, it'll reduce shock. It'll reduce poison, bleed, burn, and like everything that does damage over time. With, with the exception of... Um, well, actually, let me check. I was about to say it'll re it doesn't reduce the damage of like armor crack or break, but let's actually check that because in theory this would reduce the armor break to around twelve or thirteen damage. So let's see if that's actually yes, it does reduce the damage of of armor break as well. So that's a sorry, armor break is fifteen damage. So yeah, this reduces it to seven. So even. Even armor break is reduced because armor break has a secondary effect of applying damage over time. So this is a this is a very very good uh, upgrade, depending on kind of what you want to do. Because you know you could really go either way. The tier twos, I think these are both extremely powerful uh, talents. That like a lot of the focus talents in this game don't do that much. I think that these are two of the exceptions, and the fact that they're on the same. The fact that they're on the same tree is like really, it, it really makes you decide, and it's very interesting and, and cool. With all the inability talent uh, upgrades out of the way, let's go now over to the talents. Now, remember, your uh, 
for those that don't know, I, I've said it before in other videos, but for those that don't know, your Clash talent here on the right side will unlock at level five. And basically it adds a third upgrade to your um, to one of your other abilities. And it's your right mouse button, your Q and your E. So Ezrin's upgrade, uh, Ezrin's silence in this uh, case, we have Death Grasp. D uh, soul Fire, if it kills, Soul Fire will restore a soul and then heals him for 150. So if you get a kill with Soul Fire, you basically just regain a soul back. And then after Clash starts, Soul Fire will, the healing of Soul Fire will increase to 300 instead of 150. So doubles the self healing and then will restore one soul either way. Um, I do think that this is, I do think this is a pretty good, uh, cause so remember soul fire is your main source of damage. It's generally like the generally how you're going to use your, or get your damage out. You want to use soul fire as often as possible to like finish off people, uh, just doing a bunch of damage as, as very rapidly as you can. So this just gives you a little extra benefit from using those souls. And kind of kind of allows you to regain souls faster and, and use soul fire again and again and again without having to like regain all of that. So this is a uh, well, that's weird. It, it should have restored a soul. Let me actually let me actually try this again because this this may not actually work. I feel like it should work, but I might have just maybe missed it. I'm gonna try to very specifically get him to a low point where a soul will kill. So I'm just going to fire one. Okay, yes, it does work. I just didn't see. Maybe I just used these old fires too quickly. But either way, gives you a burst of health and restores a soul. So it kind of allows you to keep using soul fire um, again a little faster. Uh, the Q talent is form factor. The damage reduction is increased. And uh, when you use or after clash, when you use spectral form, you immediately gain three souls. So normally the damage reduction is normally the damage reduction is uh, 35 and then now it increases to 50. And this is this Ezrin's one of the few that has like very good talents across the board. I do think that this is really helpful for uh the drain tank sort of build, but kind of De death Grass is also really good because you want to be getting kills anyway because you are remember you are a damage dealer at your core regardless of how you build. So this is this is really good too. Um, but again, just a really, a really fast way to restore souls. And then just the self damage reduction is 50% damage reduction is really, really good. Uh, I, I, I think this is something worth considering as well. And then finally on the E is depth charge increases the well of souls targeting area by 20%. So just a 20%, uh, total area reduction. And then after Clash reduces the cooldown of Well of Souls by 5 seconds. So it takes it from a 20 second cooldown down to a 15 second cooldown. So all of these, again, all of these are actually really, really good. Like, I I, I, don't, I don't remember who I, what video I said it on. But I, I have said before that there are, there are a fair amount of... Uh, there are a fair amount of heroes in the game where they have some, like, throwaway talents or... Talents that give you kind of a kind of a meh immediate effect and then a really good clash effect or vice versa. So you kind of don't really consider taking them. But Ezrin actually has really good uh, talents across the board. So I I personally think it's comes down to how you really want to play. But for the most part, I honestly would consider E. I, I don't know like these these are actually all really good so you know just kind of do at your leisure all right now that we've gone over all of the upgrades and the talents we're going to go over the builds now these are uh like every video i've done so far i'm going to show you two builds that kind of play to the best of ezrin's potential and you know I, again i'm gonna i'm gonna preface this now uh instead of at the end like i've done with the others these are by no means me telling you that these are the only ways to play, that these are the only ways to build. If you find a build that works for you, please, by all means, do it. Um, I just think that these are probably the more optimal ways and have the best benefits depending on what is currently happening in the game. Because remember, you want to prioritize getting certain upgrades over others 
because it's very uncommon for any for people to reach level 10 in the clash mode. So you really want to focus getting what you need instead of kind of everything that you might plan on getting in the end. Like you don't really want to just pick whatever you want at any given time. You really want to focus in. So the first build I'm going to go over is basically what I'm going to call the Soulfire Machine Gun build. And it starts with Growing Dread. Now, I'm, I, I've said it I, I've, I've said it at least twice in this video already, but I, I want to just reiterate the the big damage threat from Ezrin comes from the tech of having three souls and then using another LMB to have that quote unquote fourth soul flying towards you and then using your right mouse button immediately. So you launch four consecutive soul fires at once and each soul fire that you're doing af one after the other is increased by 20% and that stacks. So the last soul fire that you're launching will is, is doing 60% more damage, which is like, <laughs> what is that 300 around 320 damage pre-mitigation and that's on one hit and it, granted the soul fire is it is a fairly small projectile and it's it is it is something that you have to aim but like if you hit all four shots you are chunking somebody and it's it's a it's a very rapid threat that a lot of people kind of sleep on with that though uh at level two you're going to get unholy communion uh, the reason you want to get this is because, uh, especially if the enemy is starting to clump together, like if they have a frontline and a fighter, or if their support and two damage, deal like uh, backline range damage dealers are all sticking together, you can get a lot of self-healing and damage and souls just from using this. Like you can use two LMBs and you basically have all four soul launches at the same time. And this is very, you know, rapidly gets uh gets your damage ramped up super quickly so i will get that and then from there you could really choose to I, i'm gonna end up getting renewing communion but you can choose to get this a little bit later so th this this really depends on on kind of how you want to how you're doing and how you're building um but i think the i think the better way uh, i think the better thing to do at level three is actually just get ghostly flame from here on because depending on the map that you're on, you really want to be focusing on trying to fight at certain points. So you want to, you want to kind of use Ezrin here with this, but you want to use Ezrin to control very narrow hallways, like the D point on Siren Strand or the uh, higher E points on Sanctum Falls. Or, you know, if you're fighting on the ramps into either side C points on Ghost Reef, Basically, just these narrow hallways where you want to be throwing your soul fires through as many people as possible. And since each soul fire is doing enhanced damage and now piercing, you're doing a ton of cleave damage very rapidly. So that is your that is your basic level three. So by level four, typically for regardless of who you're playing, regardless of how you want to build, you really have to consider starting at level four, uh, what you want to do answering the team. Because remember, through most of the game, uh, for, for most everyone, most characters are going to be around level three or four until the end of the first rampage. So you're, you're going to stick by level three and you kind of want to have your core uh, by that point. You, you really want to kind of think, OK, I, I have these basic upgrades. Now, what do I want to think depending on what's happening? And I think... The safest thing for Ezrin is to go ahead and get Soul Burst because you're going to start doing a lot of damage by this point and uh, a lot of enemies are going to be jumping on you and you want to be using that Immobilize to stop them from basically continuing to damage you even though the Immobilize is really it's a short Immobilize but more importantly the uh, uh, upgrade here if you hit multiple people, you're basically healing yourself for at least 100 damage, like immediately. And 100 is not a ton, but it is something. If you're getting those souls back and then you start using your LMB to start damaging them, then that uh, self-healing is going to ramp up really quickly. And then, you know, you already have the enhanced amount of souls to start soul firing as you're slowly backing away. Then from there... Uh, by level five, again, this is when you might be able to consider renewing uh, renewing communion because with that, you're now lowering the uh, cooldown of your E as well as your Q because Q also reduces damage that you take. 
And uh, I yeah, I think this is a safe level five. Then at level five with your class talent upgrading or with your with your class talent unlocking, I think with this build you would get death charge because we're going to get into uh, a tier two on the E that really makes this pivotal to hitting as many people as possible because you want to you want to stay alive and lock people down. So that will be your, your class talent. And at level six, um, I think you could probably go. I think you could go special haste because, you know, at, at this point you want to at this point, you're probably considered to be a major threat because you're going to be doing a lot of damage very rapidly and, and they're going to be they're going to be going on you. Like Ezra does not do as much damage as other damage dealers because he's kind of this middle point between like a, a damage dealer and just a drain tank. Uh, but with this with this build, you're really you're really going to be kind of they're going to sleep on the fact that you're doing a lot of damage. And if they don't notice you, then you can kind of you can you can uh, forego getting this right away. But if they do notice you, this is kind of your safety net. So that's your level six. And then level seven, you're going to get Will of the Wisp. Because, uh, again, if they start noticing that you're actually a damage threat, you're going to start getting CC'd. And that'll break you out of CC and then get you just really quickly out of dodge. Then at level eight, I think you can get uh, Eternal Suffering. Or you can start considering these uh, for more kind of defensive purposes. Again, weakness is fairly common in the game. So if they if you start seeing that weaknesses is, is kind of coming at you pretty often, then you can get this at level eight. But for for this build, I'm just going to say eternal suffering. And again, this is this is more souls stealing over a very short course of time. You got the increased area of effect of uh, increased area of effect of your E. And it just generally like you want to you want to use that as often as possible to just have as many souls as, as you can. Because you can, you know, by this point, if you're hitting at least two people, you're draining a bunch of souls because you have cleaving soul taking. You're reducing the cooldown of, of your other abilities if you decide not to use your RMB. And then you, you're, you're pretty much able to use maybe one LMB and then fire four soul fires at once. And then another LMB and then four more soul fires at once. And then another, like, it's, it's just a very quick process that ignores you know, the need to use uh, Soul Calibur again and again and again, which which really saves you a lot of time and just makes you the ability to fire more and more Soul Fires. You know, I said it's the, I said it's the Soul Fire Gatling gun and it's it's true to form. And when I when I go over and show you how this build works fully with the target dummies, like you will kind of see how that is. But anyway, level nine is going to be bloody minded. Because I think that I think the defensive sides of this, I think the defensive sides of your class talents are better. Like you can go killer instinct if you really, really want to, but I, I honestly don't think that you need it. Uh, so level nine is blade minded, and then level ten is going to be hardy. Because having just fifty percent degen resistance after using your focus is a huge, huge damage reduction. Like there, there are a lot of degens in this game that do seventy five damage or more. And reducing that by reducing that damage by half is really, really strong. And just the fact that this is a tier two that also makes you immune to weakness. So you're you're doing a lot of damage. You're taking a lot less damage. It just honestly, it's really good. But that's that's level 10. So I'm going to show how this works really fast. And you're just, you know, normally, you know, you could just take a bunch of souls and then fire your LMB and then one more and then fire your right mouse button again. And then just, you know, it, it's it's all super rapid pace and really, really simple to do. And I'm, I'm not even using E for this sake. You know, like you can you can use the E, the souls get drained and then you, you do this and then you just you can basically right mouse button right away. You don't even have to use another LMB if you want. Just look how often I'm using my soul fire. It's so crazy. And if I if I feel the need to use my LMB, uh, or sorry, to use my uh, LMB to regain that reduction, and uh, I, I think that's not something that I mentioned. It's not, it's not one second reduction per hit. It's just if you hit somebody while you have full souls, it's one second redu reduced on your other uh, uh, other two abilities. So this is not per person. So uh, that's a uh, that is definitely worth mentioning that I did not say earlier. Yeah, just just look how simple that is to do. It's it's a 
it's a pretty good uh kind of total total uh, amount of damage very easy to do and since you're you know since your focus also steals souls again that's that's already it's not even it's not even lowering the amount of regen that you can get because your your soul you know your focus will still do a ton of self healing if you get like in the fray of a bunch of people this is a really good um this is a really good damaging build. So if you're if you're in the need to do damage, you know this is this is definitely a very strong contention uh, build. But again, regardless of how you build Ezrin, he's not really going to do as much damage as other carries that are in the game. But this is a he comes pretty close with this build. And here will be the too long didn't watch version of build one. Level one, you're gonna get uh, growing dread. Level two is unholy communion. Level three is ghostly flame. If you're if you're doing well, or you know honestly if honestly if you, if you're not doing very well, uh, level four will be soul burst. Level five is going to be redoing communion, and then you're going to pick up depth charge as your clash talent. Level six is going to be spectral haste. Level seven will the wisp, and you can get those earlier if you really want to. You can probably get. Um, you can probably um, hold back on renewing communion until level seven if you really desperately need to get these. But for the sake of this build, that's what I'm getting at level seven. Then level eight is going to be eternal suffering. Level nine, bloody minded and level 10, hardy. And that's the build. Build number two, I'm going to be calling the drain tank build. Now, uh, I want to I want to again say before I get into it, Ezrin will not fit the role of an actual tank. Because he doesn't have he doesn't have the health pool or the defenses to really play the, the, to play that way, but with this uh, with this build he actually comes pretty close. But anyway, at level one you're gonna get Soul Survivor. This is an immediate self healing increase, and it it rewards you for not using your Soul Fires. Because remember, with this build you're not necessarily gonna be wanting to do a ton of damage like you can do damage every now and then but for the most part you really want to keep as many souls as often as possible because you're rewarded for keeping souls so that's gonna be your level one and then level two i want to get grave danger so that if i do get jumped on i can rapidly heal myself and then level three i'm going to get unholy ground to increase the immobilized duration because remember the General rule of thumb with the quote unquote tank role or the off tank role in this in this situation. Uh, remember, tanks want to generally create space, set up kills and, you know, lock people down. So an increase of an immobilize will be really strong in early fights because that, you know, the the power race is pivotal in every stage of the game. So having the faster ability to lock people down and get kills to gain power is really helpful. So that is your that is your basic. So now this is a this is another situation of what exactly is the enemy doing? Are they are they jumping on me more often Then I probably want to consider a touch of evil for that extra healing? Or if they're using a lot of, you know, buffs, I can go to the cursed well to do the curse effect at level four. You know, if there's a lot of armor buffs going around, if there's damage buffs, if there's a lot of shielding happening, you know, th this is something to consider. Now, if there if there's not really a lot of that happening, you can actually forego this because you're not really going to need it. Uh, you can actually forego this all the way to like level 10, because if there's just not a lot of if there's not a lot of buffs happening, like this is kind of a throwaway upgrade either way. You really don't want to go this one, because, again, I don't think that an increase of five seconds on the cooldown is worth just another half second of immobilize but keep that in mind so in this situation i'm going to say yes there's plenty of uh there's plenty of buffs happening on the enemy team so i'm going to get this at level four uh and then from here at level five you can actually consider getting bloody minded because remember with this build you're not actually going to do a lot of damage but you still want to do enough damage in fights like you still want to use your soul fire if you can so just kind of you know Remember that that's remember that you really do want to end up use, doing some damage. You, you don't just want to be spamming your LMB and keeping yourself alive, even though you, you can keep yourself alive forever and ever and ever. Um, so I would I would say that that's a solid level five. Then at level five for this build, I, I think you could really go any of these. But 
I do think that the increase area size for the lockdown is still super useful here. So again, we're going to pick up Death Charge as your class talent. At level 6, I think this build works really well with Wager of Souls because it's an increased amount of healing, which means that it's even if you get jumped on by the whole team or just by one person, like say an assassin like Trip, this will ensure you basically win every duel no matter what. Because you're going to do a lot of self-healing uh, and, you know, just, just keep yourself alive. And it's really, really simple. Like, you're you're getting 50 healing from the first one and then 60 and then immediately 100 extra healing. And just, just two, three uses of the ability is 210 healing. And that's, that's so much to turn around the potential damage threat. And even if you are taking a bunch of damage, you still have your Q, which will, which is also healing you, reminder. To just, to just be, take damage reduction and just get a bunch of self-healing and keep your life far up. It, it's it's really simple and kind of crazy. And this is a this is a pretty difficult build to show because not a lot in the arena here and then the practice area does a lot of damage to you. Well, I guess I could summon a creature and kind of show this. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, but that's level 6. Level 7 honestly could probably go for a touch of evil i think this is just really hard to pull off like it's it's a again it's a lot of healing numerically because again the you're getting a lot of healing from each tick and then you're getting 400 healing if you get a kill and then there's a health orb there which is a potential 300 more healing like that's that's a lot of self-healing but generally i think that this is just easier to do and it's much easier to stay alive if the enemy ends up jumping you because you know it's at this point, you still they might still not even realize that you're actually going a full healing build. And then this is going to give that away. But by this point, you kind of want to fully commit to the fact that you're basically a huge damage sponge and like purpose, almost purposely getting yourself caught out so that you can just stay alive and just you be a distraction and enforce enemy cooldowns and then have your team just run in and finish off the fight for you. So this is really good at just, again, staying alive. And then level eight is going to be lifeline because this is a 20 percent self-healing from all sources and then even if you do have to run and get out of the fight uh if you're at like super low health and you don't you just don't have anything to heal you you can get back to fights faster because you're going to be getting health faster like once you're out of combat and then finally for the soul fires it honestly really doesn't matter i i still think for the most part growing dread is a little bit better but if you're going to be Locking people down as as long as you can with your E. You can get Salt the Earth and then get that extra bit of, of zone control and CC with Soul Decay. You could probably go Death Death's Reach as well just to do the extra cleave damage and just assure that everyone is taking a little bit of damage if you get three or more people locked down. Uh, but the slow is also pretty useful. So that's the that is the drain tank build. And I'm gonna I don't I mean, I feel like the dragon probably does the most damage here out of the four monsters that you can summon. So I'm just going to go in. And, you know, normally when you fight, normally when you want to fight a creature, you want to just basically, uh, <laughs> you want to basically try to dodge as often as you can. But you don't really have to with this build. Just, just look at all, like I'm standing in everything and it doesn't matter. I'm just getting so much health back because I'm just doing a ton of damage. Like you are, you are... You're literally a drain tank and you're not you're not pulling big damage numbers like you're not going to be doing damage quickly, but you're still doing damage. You're, you're still doing damage. You're getting a lot of healing. It's it's so easy and it's really, really effective. Like I can it's it'll take me a while to take the dragon down like you're you'll you'll take a while to take a dragon no matter what. But you're such a nuisance with this build that it really just it's so easy it's so easy and, and like anyone else the game the game rewards you and it's pretty easy to actually solo monsters like if you get really skilled at the game but Ezrin like you can make so many mistakes and it just doesn't matter so that's that's kind of what you're trying to do with this build and even if you go against an enemy team like decide to just act as that secondary front line for the team it just it's so easy to stay alive and I, it's, I don't know, it's, you know, you're, you're forgoing a lot of damage, but there, there is, there is such a thing as like too much self-sustain, but I think this is a very happy, like healthy medium for the sake of just 
being able to stay alive and being a general nuisance because in the end you know again the power race is the most important thing in the game and if you're staying alive you're not giving the enemy power and you're still performing a role in the game even though you're not doing damage like you can still perform what you need to do with this build the tldr of the drain tank build level one is going to be soul survivor level two is grave danger level three is unholy ground and that's kind of your that's kind of your core trinity at level four, you can consider Cursed Well. Uh, if there's a lot of enemy buffs going on, you can get this. Otherwise, you can save this all the way until level 10 because it's just kind of a throwaway. But for the sake of this build, we're going to get it at level four. And then level five, we're going to get Bloody Minded. You're also going to get uh, Depth Charge at level five when you unlock your class talent for the increased area effect E size. Level six is going to be Wager of Souls. Level seven is going to be uh, Touch It Evil. Level 8 is Lifeline, level 9 is Salt the Earth, and level 10 is Soul Decay. That is the deep dive for Ezrin. So uh, again, I want to say if you end up finding a build that works for you that are not the two builds that I gave you, then by all means, please play them. You know, you, you definitely can play the game as you want. Ezrin does have a lot of good upgrades. Uh, so by all means, you know, please play as you want to. If you enjoyed watching, make sure to like and subscribe and leave comments and all that stuff, especially if you learn something new. Uh, I definitely, I definitely, it takes a lot of time to make these uh, videos because it's just a lot of recording and a lot of editing. So I, I appreciate any positive comments that you guys leave. Uh, again, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.